18 inches thick from the brick to the drywall. I think it's more like 18 and a half, but for good measure, we'll say 18 inches. Um, that helps a lot with, with the energy. We have a, about an inch and a half air gap between the brick and the ICF form. So on the south side in the summertime when the sun's beating in, the brick will get really hot. But you come to the inside and, and there's absolutely nothing getting, nothing penetrating that. Not to mention in the event of a tornado or something al along that line, this, this wall would be really strong. It, it would stand. Uh, an F5 tornado, the wall would stand. Okay, this is an insulated concrete form. Um, that's what the exterior walls of the house are made of. This particular form has metal studs on six inch centers. This is where you can attach your drywall. Screw the drywall to it on the inside. On the outside, it's got the same and you just screw your brick ties to the outside or vinyl siding, whatever your exterior is going to be. This metal internal rebar is welded from this stud to this stud all the way through the concrete. When the concrete's poured in, it really gives a strong anchor and a strong wall. We also added rebar throughout the house uh, about every two feet on the exterior walls. See how thick this wall is? That's solid concrete behind that door frame. The walls are solid concrete, reinforced with rebar, and so is the ceiling. See how low the ceiling is? That's concrete coming down. Um, and it has the ironclad bulletproof door. This is the 80 gallon tank that the big panel on the roof pushes the fluid through. It's got a heat exchanger in the bottom, like a boiler. All right, this is the pump. You saw the smaller PV panel earlier on the roof. Its job is to run this pump. When the sun comes up, this pump starts running. It's very simple. Uh, and the collector collects the sun's rays and heats the fluid that flows through the uh, solar collector, the solar thermal collector. That fluid heats up, goes through this boiler. You can feel the heat right here. This little pump circulates it through there and it's got the heat exchanger in the bottom of this tank and it heats up this 80 gallon tank. The 80 gallon tank then charges this 40 gallon electric standby tank. So it almost eliminates the use of electricity to heat the water, especially on a sunny day. You notice the water heater was way down at the other end of the house. We have a little button right here. Press this button. It kicks in a pump that's under the tub that has a sensor in it, a temperature sensor. It recirculates the water back to the water heater. It's not a constant recirculation system because that would be wasteful. So when you get ready to brush your teeth or take a shower or take a bath, just press that button. It takes about 60 to 90 seconds for that pump to shut off and when it, when it receives hot water, the pump will shut off. And um, then you can turn it on here and you've, you've got pretty well instant hot water. Yeah. And the water that the sun heats up is really hot. It's, uh, so hot you can't hold your hand under it. Okay, so now we're in the attic of uh, house number two, the ICF house. And before we were talking about philosophically, there's two ways that you can manage the roof. And either you approach the roof as just an umbrella where you just wanted to keep the water off of you and you don't want any thermal transfer between the rest of the house. And that's the one we visited before. This one is to totally different in that this roof is encapsulated uh, with foam. So now what we've done is we've moved our thermal barrier from our ceiling where we're standing to the roof line. Not only have we moved the thermal barrier, which is the insulation, but we've moved our air ceiling to the roof line. So now, uh, this becomes part of the house, albeit passively conditioned, it is conditioned space. So this is totally sealed, and it's not an easy thing to get a totally sealed attic. I've tested a lot of these for the Energy Star program, and you can, uh, this foam uh, can have gaps in it, so you've gotta be careful about the air sealing. And what we did was, 
we put this house under pressure, negative pressure, after this installation and we had the installer come back and touch up all the cracks and crevices we found to get to our uh, air infiltration level that we wanted, which is very, very low. So if you start out there at the top plate, the ceiling starts at the wall, you seal it, the foam is both, this is what's called open cell foam. It both seals for air tightness and insulates. So we sprayed out there on, on, on there, seal it all the way to the top and the gable ends, so we now, we now have an enclosed unit. So you evaluate the different types of roof systems you want and come up with one you like. This one will cost more, but this one gains you a lot of value. One other thing that we failed to talk about in both of these houses is uh, radon mitigation. Uh, radon is a problem uh, not so much in West Tennessee, but it does happen in West Tennessee, and it can it can be uh, it can cause cancer. So uh, you want to you want to monitor it or check it. Uh, but when we build these houses, we always put a passive mitigation system in so that we can, if we want, we can check it later. And if we need to, we can add an active system. But basically, the way it's designed is it goes all the way down underneath the slab floor and it captures any air movement that will occur up under that floor. So if there's any gases coming up, radon gases, uh, it'll come up this it'll come up this pathway and go out right here out this stack so everything kind of goes to these pipes we've got into the captive air then it floats straight out the top of the house so we shouldn't have any radon coming up through the floor and then we've got over the top of that we've got that sealed with a covering so there shouldn't be anything coming up in these